I'll do that. Yep. Yes. Keeps my hands clean to rub together <laughs> so that I can say how excited I am to taste this tart. Hello, I'm Alice Zaslavsky. Welcome to the final stage of our beetroot tart cook-along. Who is our? Who are us? Cass from ASCO is here to talk you through how to use your combi steam oven. Because cooking this tart with combi steam will change the game. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, last time we prepped our beets. Yes. So you should have your beets ready to go. And we also made our pastry. Yes. So that pastry should be ready to go. Take that out of the fridge and preheat your oven. What are we preheating our oven to? Preheating our oven to 180 degrees mm -hmm. and... and we're using bottom element with fan. Uh -huh. So what that's going to do is having that bottom element is going to cook our pastry from the bottom. Nice. Um, having the fan is also gonna cook our topping as well. Mm -hmm. And we will place this on the shelf position number one. Terrific. So all of our shelves are also numbered as well, going from one up to five. So it's very easy to understand how to cook in the, how to cook in the ovens. Lovely. Nice. Excellent. And it's true, actually, for a lot of tarts, the worst thing you can have is a soggy bottom. Nobody likes a soggy bottom. No one. So let's get our, uh, speaking of bottoms, let's get our onions going yes. from the bottom of the soil. <laughs> these are some Spanish onions or red onions. You can use brown onions as well. We're going to caramelise these. And because they are sweeter, they'll take less time to caramelise yes. and they'll have a sweeter flavour. And Cass is going to show you how to slice an onion which is a skill that will never lead you astray. Straight down. Now, Cass is gonna do two examples, so that's one way. That's the way that I like to slice my onion for salads, to keep yes, the shape, sorry. the half moon. For caramelization, I like to go the other way. Yes. Against the grain. Yep. And that's the same for onion soup as well. And the reason why is because that actually breaks down better in the pan. Perfect. It's a cell structure thing, kitchen science. It's one of the reasons I love to get kids into the kitchen all the time because you just never know when learning might occur. So now that that's ready to go, pop yep, that in the pop pan. Pop those in our pan. Terrific. And if you aren't going as fast, that's okay. We're going to take this one nice and slow. Fantastic. So, and in here, what we'll do is we'll add some butter, some oil, a uh, bit of salt as well, a bit of sugar, mm -hmm. and also some balsamic vinegar. Okay, let's do that. Perfect. So, oil. The reason we use oil and butter is because the oil takes the um, cooking temperature or the smoking point higher. The butter is there for flavour. Yes. <laughs> the and sugar. Water. Yes. Yep. Just a nice knob. Um, you've got all the measurements in your recipes. Yep. And in goes the salt for flavour. And sugar. Mm -hmm. The sugar will accelerate the caramelisation, but you don't need to add too much if you're worried about making it too sweet. Just a pinch. Yeah, just a pinch. You can also use honey or maple syrup as well. Oh, maple syrup would be really nice. Oh, yeah. And then some balsamic vinegar as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. And all of that together is going to make like a sticky, caramelised balsamic onion situation that's going to go perfectly with the beetroot. Speaking of beetroot, shall we? Yes, we shall. Okay. So you should have some pre-steamed beetroots ready to go. If you didn't take the skins off, great. <laughs> Oil up your hands and the skins should slip straight off. Um, if you did peel them, that's okay too. Next time, remember, and let's grate. Coarsest setting. Perfect. You can do this in the food processor if you want to as well. And then with all this little bit as well, I'll just chop that up and we can add that in also. We don't yeah. want to waste anything. No way. Or you could just eat it as a little chef snack Ooh, for yourself. I love it. Yeah. And these little bits as well, if you do have lots of bits that are left over, you can dehydrate them. I yes. love that tip. Yes. Yeah. So how many of the ASCO steam ovens have the dehydration setting? They would know at home because you've got some automatic programs as well. So what you would do is go through your automatic programs. We've Great. got about 160 of them. Mm -hmm. 
ranging from all different types of foods, meats, fish, dehydration. You can also sanitize as well in our in our ASCO ovens, babies' bottles, kids' toys, jars for when you're sterilizing, uh, when you're making um, gems and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, yogurt. We also have a yogurt function as well. Great. Do you yeah. have any other favourite? What's your like go-to favourite function? I love our dough rice function is sensational. I love. I use that every time I make bread. Great. Um, it's it's amazing. Yeah, like a reliable proof is the difference between a soggy loaf or a yeah. flat loaf and a nice high rise. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's looking great. I'll just pop those in there. Pun always intended, even when it's not intended. Yeah. Uh, so we've got our, uh, by the magic of television, we've already got our grated beetroot and caramelised onion mix. But if you haven't got that yet, um, just keep keep watching it, you know, keep it sizzling away. What yeah. sort of temperature should we be expecting? Um, I'd probably onion? leave it on uh, for the caramel yeah. the caramelized onions. Mm -hmm. I'd probably leave it on like a level five. If you're using induction, mm -hmm. if you're using gas, I'd probably go medium, medium to low. You'd, you don't want to color them too much. It's mm -hmm. more about just releasing the sugars yes. and caramelizing them. Yeah. Great. Cool. So we'll clean this down. We'll make sure your onions are nice and caramelized. Your beetroot should be grated and then we'll be back to make our tart case.
Welcome back. We've got our chilled pastry that's been coming to temperature so it's nice and easy to roll. Now Cass is going to pop a bit of flour on the bench, which I would encourage you to do. Nice clean bench, bit of flour, a bit of flour on the hands to help the pastry from sticking to them and a bit of flour on the rolling pin as well. And then out pops your pastry and you're going to roll this into an oblong shape yes. because we're using a rectangular tart tin. Okay. So Cass, how much do you make your own pastry? All the time. All the time. Short pastry, yes, all the time. I love it. So once we have the skills to make this kind of short pastry, what else can we bake? Oh, anything. Anything. Quiche. I make a beautiful quiche um, using the combi steam as well in, in our ovens. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can have all different flavours in there as well. Mm. Um, yeah. Cheddar biscuits, I feel oh, like. Oh, yes. And is there any benefit to using the combi steam for biscuits? Uh, again, introducing the little bit of that steam mm -hmm. will just help in the cooking process, keeping them nice and moist and then nice and crunchy on the outside so as that's, well. Is that steam level one? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Talk us through the steam levels. Steam, okay, so we have combi steam one, two and three. Mm -hmm. Now, what we, um, sorry, so when we talk about cooking with combi steam, we're talking about using a hot air function with a bit of steam. Yep. And in our, in our ovens, we have combi steam one, two, and three. Number one gives us 25% of steam. So that is perfect for, you know, any type of cooking, really. Mm -hmm. You can take your traditional recipe. You don't need to change the temperature. You don't need to change the time. Mm -hmm. You're just changing the methodology. Yep. So introducing a little bit of steam uh, just helps pastry, uh, the layers separate. It gives you a really nice crispy crunch if you make baking bread, mm. really soft and beautiful and tender in the middle. Yeah. Um, then we also have combi steam two, which gives us 50% of steam. Mm -hmm. So that is great for pasta bakes, lasagnas, something that you don't want to kind of dry out. You want to keep it nice and moist. Mm -hmm. It's also fantastic for regeneration. So reheating in a combi steam oven leftover food is absolutely amazing. It's like you've just cooked that food fresh. Wow, because that's moisture loss that actually makes food taste left over. Yes, yeah. yes. And, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of people will reheat food in the microwave, mm -hmm. which is convenient, but it's not the at same. the end of the day, no, no, it doesn't your, taste the same. Dry, no, it dries your food out, it yeah. overcooks it. Yeah. By regenerating it in the steam, it's like you've just cooked it fresh. I love that. It takes a little bit longer, mm -hmm. but it's so worth it. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. And the reason that you lose moisture is because you're probably refrigerating and the fridge sucks it of yeah. moisture and life. So being able to regenerate it rather than just zapping it sounds really good to me, it's Cass. Amazing. Yeah. And then the final step three. Oh, step three. Uh, so Combi Steam 3 gives us 75%. Now that is fantastic for low and slow cooking. So beef brisket, lamb shanks, uh, beef short ribs, mm. You don't have to cover it either. Just keep it open. The steam will penetrate through the proteins yeah. and, and break it down. So if you're following a recipe that tells you to put a lid on it, in the combi steam oven, don't, don't worry about to. it. No, don't have to. That's appealing. So it sounds like a good rule of thumb is anything that you'd put foil on, you're thinking combi steam two and three. Yes, yeah. yes, yep, definitely. Foil, combi steam two, lid, combi steam, steam three. three. Yes. Ah, yes. I get it. And, and a good way to always remember it as well is the less steam, the more crispy. The more steam, the less crispy. Cool. The, the end result will be. Great. Okay, so this is pretty much ready to go. Ready. Now, when you get to this point, so it's at about, say, three mil thickness, yeah. um, you can daringly put it on your rolling pin, you which is that. what Cass is going to demonstrate, and then that's going to roll straight onto your tart tin, which we're just going to really quickly grease. grease yeah. And you can grease it with butter or you can use cooking spray. Um, you can pop some baking paper in the bottom if you want to, just like a little smidge for safety. Oh, I love butter. But it just gives it so much flavour. Yes, that's why we're friends, Cass. <laughs> yeah. Forget all the other options, really. Exactly. Yeah. Butter makes everything better. And you can use plant-based butter too. 
You know, I, just last week um, I was chatting with Michael James, the baker that used to be at Tivoli Road, yeah. uh, that some of you might know, and he uh, he's just written a savoury baking cookbook. Yeah. And he was talking about um, making a vegan butter. Oh, yeah. beautiful. And you just coconut oil, olive oil, um, and some nutritional yeast, which plant-based people will be very familiar with. Yeah. And there's one more thing that's missing. I'm going to tell you it's something umami-ish. Um, you know, it could be... Uh, let's just say, go get Michael James' cookbook, Savory Bakes, especially if you're enjoying this savory bake, uh, and you can find out how to make that plant-based butter for yourself. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so that's good. But I think even with those, you know, you've got most of the most of what you need there. Yeah. Ooh, yes. Mm, Look at sure that. It's gonna be even. Here we go. And then you kind of just loosely let it let it up. Fall in. Yeah. yeah. Look at the beautiful thyme in it as well. I didn't chop the thyme. I left the thyme nice and Rough. um yeah, nice yeah. and whole, so you can just see the beautiful leaves Flecked. through the gorgeous pastry. I can see this on a Christmas spread, you know, in the middle of the table, perfect for the vegos in the household, and it's just a beautiful dramatic. It is. Dish. It is. Okay, and then with my pin, I will just roll off our excess. Boom. Pop this back in the fridge to rest for about 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then we can bring it out and blind bake it. Sounds good. And in that time, we're going to get onto our filling. So make sure you've got your filling ingredients in front of you. Your eggs, your cream, your goat's cheese, your um, beets. grated bits. Yeah, your beets. We're Onions. also going to use a mandolin. If you've got a mandolin at home, go for it. Otherwise, a sharp knife will see you through. Perfect. Nice one, Cass. Beautiful. It's like you've done that before.
Well, we managed to talk our way through 15 minutes, which means that your pastry should be ready to go into a blind bake. Cass, yes. what are we going to use as our weight for blind baking? I've got some soup mix huh. and rice. Great. Line it with our baking paper. Mm -hmm. And then I've got my blind baking bits and pieces. Love it. And oh, actually, you know, if you're having trouble actually getting it to stay, squash it there. first. And then that will be much more willing to be malleable into the pan. Perfect. There you go. Soup mix. If you've got mm -hmm. baking, be baking beads, good for you. Uh, but most people probably have like some stale uh, pulses and grains that mm. they're using. I've got some uh, baking beads somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think? I've got some somewhere. <laughs> Somebody gave them to you for some Christmas stocking <laughs> stuffer somewhere. So check the back of your cupboard. Yeah. Otherwise, just use this. Works something works perfectly like this. fine. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Okay, let's get that into the oven. And Pop what temp are we going? So our oven is preheated at 180 degrees and we're using bottom element with fan. Great. So we'll just pop that in. Mm -hmm. Alice, would you be able to open the door for me? Thank you. I didn't even need to make noises because the oven did it for me. And another little feature as well with our ovens is we have soft closed doors. Soft. All of our ovens have soft closed doors. So if someone's angry, they can't slam the oven door. I don't know if that's a feature or a negative because sometimes you want some. No, you never want some. That's, that is a great feature. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, okay, so the next step is while that's blind baking, we've got to get onto our mix. So yes. we've got our beetroot and our caramelised onion that need to be mixed together. Yep. Look at that caramelised onion. Have Isn't a look at the colour. Yum. Soft, sweet. Gorgeous. Sticky, syrupy. Mix that together with the earthy sweetness of the beetroot. That is just a gorgeous combination. Yum. And um, I just actually need a little bit of thyme as well. We'll pop some fresh thyme in here. Yep, great. I'll find some thyme. Do you have thyme, Alice? <laughs> I got time for you. <laughs> it's behind me. Okay. Let me so, just get a bigger bowl. Some fresh thyme going into this mix. Perfect. I like the layering. So you're using the same flavours. It's very MasterChef-y actually. You're yeah. using the same flavours in, in each element of this dish. So here we go. Some thyme. And you can mix whatever you want. If you want to pop some chervil or some dill, that goes really well with beetroot. Chives as well. Yes, I don't mind chives. chives in it as well. I think we should pop some chives on top. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and also, if you have, you may have some mixture left over as well. So it will last for probably three to five days in the fridge in an um, airtight container. Mm -hmm. You can use it, pop it in a salad, um, you know, make another tart if you need to. Freeze it. Use you it later. Freeze it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Same with your pastry as well. You can also freeze that if you've got some leftover pastry. I'm thinking it's a really good base for a borscht. So if you want to make yourself oh, some yes. beetroot soup, but you've already got your onion done and you've got your beetroot bits and then you can just add some stock to it. Yep. You have like yep. three quarters of the way there. Amazing. Cool. So that's the mix there. Yep. Now we're going to do something a little bit fancy and mandolin. We've got a golden beet. You don't need to have a golden beet. If you've got a baby beet that's raw, ready to go, I'm not going to talk. I'm not <laughs> going to distract you. Mandolins are dangerous. They just very slowly and softly just scraping down. Yep. Look at that colour. Look at the colour. Look at your fingers all intact. Yes, that's right. It's going to be a good day. <laughs> so if you're using your mandolin at home, please use a guard. Sorry. Oh, God, please stop. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And then we've still got a little bit of the stem on there yes. as well. So see how so we did pretty. that on the vertical? So you keep the shape of the beat. Lovely. And again... Golden beets are seasonal, so if you can find them, awesome. If you can't, life goes on, use straight up Whatever purple beets. Got, yeah. Whatever you got. Okay, so that's ready to go. Cass, thank you for doing that. That was like a Hunger Games situation. You volunteered as tribute and you yes. made it out alive. Did it. Okay, so the other thing we're going to do is we've got our goat's cheese. Now let's mix up our filling. Yep, so in my jug I've got my pure cream. Mm -hmm. um, I've also got three eggs as well. We've put some salt and pepper in here mm -hmm. and a little bit of nutmeg. Um, once our tart has blind baked, then um, we can start putting it all together. Terrific. 
Um, make sure that you add an extra rasp of nutmeg for me because I reckon that's a... I love me too. Yeah. Oh, gosh, especially with these earthy flavours of the veg. Mm. I think this is just going to be a stupendous, delicious tart. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. We'll see you back soon.
Welcome back to the ASCO Combi Steam Cook Along. Oh, what a coincidence. That's the timer. Our blind baked tart shell should be ready. Let's go and grab it out of the oven. And so should yours. And you know when it's ready because when you touch the pastry, carefully, it's hot, it should be um, not wet to touch. Correct, Amundo, Cass? Yes. So. It's kind of like parboiling. Look at that. Yeah, so it shouldn't be fully cooked, but it should have like a level of cookedness to it, a dryness to the pastry. That's lovely. That Beautiful. And it, it's coming away a little bit as well, which mm. is a good sign too, because it means it'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's always hopeful. That's always hopeful. So we've got our mix ready to go. You should have your mix ready too. Uh, and I've also picked the very tiniest little leaves from the beets leaves that you might have reserved at home but if you don't have them life goes on just That's an it. optional extra uh so shall we fill let's let's fill mm -hmm. so i might just pop it on this tray great idea so just be aware too once we start to pour in the egg and cream mixture mm -hmm. just have a little um paper towel underneath your tray just to catch any spillage yes very we will have a little bit of spillage. very relatable and also a great way of gripping too so um, why don't we mix a little bit of our cheese into the filling? Yes. Yeah, yep, creamy bits. So um, I'll do that. Yep. Yes. Keeps my hands clean to rub together <laughs> so that I can say how excited I am to taste this tart. And I hope you are too. It's going to be beautiful. Nice. So about half of your cheese should be crumbled into the mix and we can save some nice big globs for the top. And you don't have to use marinated feta. You can use um, goat chef. Did you need to? I will go wash my hands, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of this, Cass will do with her elbows. <laughs> you can use crumbly feta. You can use um, any kind of, you know, most of you have marinated Persian feta in your pantry or in your fridge ready to go. So mm. yeah, this is what you can use it for beyond just eating it with a spoon or popping it in with your smashed avocado. Beautiful. Cool. So, mm -hmm. we might start by just popping our beets and our caramelised onions Lovely. and our thyme. Mm -hmm. Just pop that in the bottom of the shell. That smells so fantastic. It's so earthy. Yeah. I just love beetroot. Me too. And if you've got beet detractors in the household, the key is to overcook the beets. So, you know, that steam function, that, getting it to fork tender. Yep. I think that might be, uh, actually we'll just pop a little bit more in there. This is one uh, dish that I highly recommend you overfill. Because yes. it won't rise too much. And no, it doesn't, no. No. Perfect. Yum. And then we've got a little bit as well that we could save for, for later. For Ron. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So now in goes your custard, essentially. This is your tart binder eggy, creamy, cheesy mix, mm -hmm. nutmeggy. You know, I was thinking um, for when I was smelling that beetroot and onion mix, the next time you make this, I feel like when you're caramelising the onions, a little bit of star anise wouldn't go oh, astray. Oh, yes. Right? Yep, beautiful. Star anise. And this, just the whole thing is yep. just so festive. Just great. I want to see it on your festive spreads this year. Speaking of spreading, I'm not seeing any spillage. No, that's good. No, impressive. So I'll just kind of mix it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We don't want to mix it up too much because you don't want the whole mixture to be pink. No. That's the other thing. It's just going to look so dramatic when it bakes. It's about harnessing the pink for good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just go a little bit more just here. Uh-huh. And then these beets, if you have mandolin some beets, if you have picked some leaves, they should sort of jauntily go on top. And as they bake, they'll uh, become almost like roses, just curling. I do this on my beetroot chocolate brownie in praise of veg. It's oh, nice. i seen that recipe of yeah. yours. I want to make that. Thank you. Oh, and they just looked absolutely amazing. Have you made brownies in the combi steam? Yes, brownies using combi steam one again. You get that beautiful crunch on top and they're just so gorgeous and gooey inside. Oof. Absolutely beautiful. Yum. Oh, that looks so pretty. Jaunty, right? I think this is going to look just beautiful. And then what do you reckon? Oh, maybe go one in the middle there. 
Yeah, and you kind of don't want anything to line up. That's the key, like a food styling tip, is you want things to be at uneven angles so mm. that that way it looks undone. There you go. Okay. And you think we... Oh, yeah. Yep. Yes, yes. We need we more, need is more, more. feta. More yeah. is more. So this is the beautiful goat's Meredith mm -hmm. um, goat's cheese. Mm -hmm. Terrific. My favourite um, Victorian marinated feta that's uh, just come on the market. Mm. Hot tip for you, Dreaming Goat Dairy. Ooh. Oof, that's the one to look out for Ooh. if you can. But Meredith is wonderful and Yarra Valley Dairy is great too. Yeah, Yarra, yeah. I'll All just quickly good. wash my hands. Terrific. And one thing that you can also do is the marinated feta has oil at the bottom, so you can use the oil to kind of give that a drizz as well. Um, I'll grab a little spoon. Give that a little drizz on top, so then you get like some even more kind of you know texture. Yeah. Especially over the feta bits, it'll help to uh, encourage some golden mm. brown action. <gasps> yes. That looks sensational. Yes, it does. Uh, beetroot powder. Of oh, beetroot powder, yes. Only you know, as an aside, only if you've got it, because you've gone on ahead and done the dehydration function on the on the combi steam. Look at that. Oof. This looks very chefy, may I just say. <laughs> it it does, but it's so simple. Yeah, it's so simple for yeah. everyone at home to make. Totally, from pizza scrolls to very chefy looking <laughs> beetroot and goat's cheese that tarts. That's gorgeous. Look at you go. Okay, now ready to um, go. Yep, I might just grab you, uh, get you to just to take the paper off for me. Uh huh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And we should be. Okay, I can actually just pop it straight on that um, rack that's in the oven there. Really? Yes. So I'll get you to open the okay. door again for me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we're going straight in. Oof. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go 20 minutes and then we'll check it. Terrific. Pop that timer. Mm-hmm. 200 degrees using the bottom element with fan. Mm -hmm. Again, that bottom element is going to cook the base of our pastry. Uh -huh. Having that hot air function as well is going to cook our filling as well. Any steam on that one, Cass? No. Uh, I think for tarts, it's better just to leave it as bottom element with fan. Okay. Because as we discussed, we don't like soggy bottoms. Not no that steam bottom. would give us a soggy bottom, no. but yeah, we just want to make sure. You don't want to tempt the fates. Exactly. Nice. Okay. Exactly. Well, we'll see you once your tart is done.
Is your kitchen smelling as delicious as ours is right now? It smells amazing in here. Amazing. And that means that the tart shouldn't be too far away. So get your garnishes ready. You can garnish with fresh herbs or if you're lucky enough to be growing edible flowers, things like violas, for example, would be perfect on a tart like this. Chives, we're going to snip them. You don't need to use a sharp knife, just some sharp kitchen shears or scissors will do the job. And you don't need it to be too small. I think just a bit of a... a bit of texture. Texture yes. is the word, yes. exactly. And then I'm going to pop some thyme in on top because one thing actually that's really great, especially if you are using flavours again and again, you know, if you're doing that mirroring of, of each layer, yeah. um, you want to highlight those mirrored flavours on that garnish too. Exactly. So, hence the beet leaves uh, salad that you might like to serve alongside, which we've got some serving suggestions of in the recipe, mm -hmm. and hence the fresh thyme on top. Speaking of thyme, it should be just about time now. I think it is. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Tell you what. So we didn't use the combi steam for the tart baking, but we did use it for the beets. Correct, yes. 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 And what I loved about that is when you boil beets in water, you're losing so much of the gorgeous colour and nutrition yep. into the water. And flavour. Exactly, exactly. Whereas it's here, watering it down. It's watering it down, yeah. literally. Yeah. Whereas here, you're reincorporating the colour, the flavour, the, the gorgeous, vibrant, Red, purple, yep, 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 into the tart shell. Amazing. Excellent. Mm. Okay. Do you use that timer on the oven all the time? Or? Yes, yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. We, we have a main timer, which turns the oven off, yep. um, where I prefer to use the egg timers. So there's like three different independent egg timers okay. that you can use. That's cool. Mm. Really yeah. handy. And then um, I feel like one thing that people worry about is leaving their oven on when yes. they leave the house. Is there a safety on the ASCO oven where it turns itself off? Um, after a certain amount of time, yes, it would. Yes. Handy. Yes, it would. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, another awesome thing as well that I um, wanted to explain as well is we have what we call stage cooking. Now, what that means is a customer or people at home, you can set up to three different cookery methods in one cook. Okay. So, for instance, we could, let's go potatoes. We could pre-steam our potatoes. Mm -hmm. We could then set our oven up to combi steam one at a very high temp. Uh -huh. We could stop there if we wanted to or if we felt that our potatoes needed to be a bit more brown, we could introduce the grill. And what that means is that you could preset that timer in the morning. Yes. And then go to work and come back to crispy potatoes. Exactly. Yeah. Whoa. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. So, no, it's awesome. That smells like it's just about ready. And guess what? Because the light's on, we can check it. Yeah. So that looks absolutely sublime. I reckon it's time to get that out of the oven. Let's take it out. Oof, that is gorgeous. Yes. Look at Might hands. actually just take it out on that rat. Okay. Tell you what. We have outdone ourselves in this cook along and I bet you have too. Now that you've got it out of the oven, your pastry should be coming away from the tart tin. Your filling should be nice and golden. The beetroot has curled in and around itself and the little pockets of pink and fuchsia. Mm. Gosh. Let's finish it off with our fresh herbs, shall Let's we? Let's do it. So, so sprinkling of our choice. Yep, from a height. From a height. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And then the flowers. It's up to you whether you want to pick the petals and get a bit restauranty with it. I wouldn't. I, I like keep them nice like that. Me too. Yeah. And then let them fall from a height as well if you can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. And actually... It's okay if some of the flowers fall um, upside down because I think that looks more organic anyway. Yeah. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay. There you have it. Officially the prettiest tart I ever did see. <laughs> Yes. Fabulous. Oh, gosh. It has been such a pleasure cooking along with you and with you at home. Same with you and same with you guys as well. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, Cass. Thank, Thank you, you, Alice. Teaching us why it is that we should love our combi steam oven. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again sometime. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheerio. <laughs>